Hampton University is not just a small school by the sea, but it's a home where greatness is transformed. A home where success will never just be an option. A home where a university becomes a family. A place where anything and everything is possible. A home that has very great names such as Booker T. Washington, Mary Jackson, DJ Envy, Wanda Sykes. Oh yeah, wait, let's not forget about great names in sports. Hasina McCory, Rick Mahorn, Bob Mann, Jackie Mid Williams, Marquise Dixon. These notable Hamptonians have helped pave the way for present and future generations to come. And out of these names, a sense of emergence has risen. So today, I'd like to welcome you to the emergence. I'll be your host, your tour guide, Kareem Green. Better not escape you. Hey, I'm Kay, better known as Past. What's up, we Jay? Better known as Future. Are you guys being serious right now? Really? During my introduction? Never mind. Where was I? Right. I'll be taking you. What? <sighs> okay, okay. We'll be taking you on a journey through the past, present, and future of Hampton University sports. So, first, Let's take a quick field trip back in time, just 21 years ago, on March 15, 2001. The Hampton Pirates, the underdog team, made NCAA tournament history by becoming the fourth 15-ranked team to defeat second-ranked team Iowa State, 58-57. With only 11.3 seconds left, down 56-57, the Pirates were able to take a two-point lead by boosting Hampton's chances by 99%. Crazy, crazy amount of emotional for them. Oh yeah, I was there. That's when Coach Steve Murphy was raising the air. Correct, and with that, an underdog HBCU team just beat Iowa State and sent them right back home. Crazy story, right? All right, now let's speed up this time machine some more to 2008 to 2016. To one of these individuals that have the best Hampton sports history. Someone that still holds the records for two indoor and two outdoor sports. Christina McCoy won her first MEAC championship in 2008. And after that, she never stopped working. In 2010, marked her first American record in 400 meters, recording the time of 50.54 seconds. And after she graduated Hampton, she definitely, definitely didn't stop. She won her gold medals in the London and Rio Olympics. And with all those accomplishments, Francina McCord was able to make the MEAC Hall of Fame. So without the past, we wouldn't have a foundation today in the present. Uh, but since we're talking about the present, here's a few sports that stand out to me. Our team has something very special to it, and it's the diversity our team brings. Um, every girl on the team specifically comes from a different country. Like me, for example, I'm from Canada. Some of my teammates are from Colombia, Sweden. So we're all, um, or we all come from all over the world, which is a very cool aspect. I know a lot of other teams don't have the chance to experience. I think with the diversity, we're all able to bring something to the team that no one even knew existed prior to. Um, playing for the school. So your team is your family and for us I think we stick together a lot more because we truly understand each other. Not only do we all come from different countries, we're all new to the U.S. or maybe the only American on the team, but because of this I feel like we have a connection that you can't build with someone that you just meet in class, you can't build with someone that you just meet off campus. The team, we do everything together. We'll eat together, we train together, we celebrate our um, we celebrate our accomplishments and we are there for one another when we don't do as well. So I think we just all have a connection that no one really else can understand. So with our new coach, I think we have been able to see tremendous improvement with just the team dynamic, the team players. So having Coach Anna brought in, I think, is a very crucial part to creating the next big thing for Hampton Tennis. She's already brought in one really good player. Two of them just started this year. And just from what I've seen, um, the future of Hampton Tennis looks like it's going to be a, or at a lot of a higher level than what we've yeah, seen in the so past. I just qualified um, for the Jamaica Davis Club team a very, a very, very a proud moment in my tennis career. And um, this is something that I've dreamt of all my life to play for my, my country. You know, um, obviously a, a lot of people back home have been really um, 
messaging me, have been really reaching out to me, congratulating me. So that that's uh, been an incredible, you know, milestone for me in my career, and um, I'm super proud to um, to be representing my country, representing my family. I'm also representing uh, Hampton University, so I'm super proud of this moment. Moving to the CAA, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great move for Hampton. It's going to definitely give them more exposure. It's going to definitely um, bring in a lot, of, lot more uh, players that are of high caliber. And so that, that's a great move for the university. And, it, and it only, it's only going to get better from here. So I'm super excited for what you know the future holds in Hampton Athletics. The Pirates are the only HBCU team with a sales team. But we'll discuss way more sports too. The sailing has been a, a good opportunity for me so far to continue practicing the sports. Uh, I'm from Italy, that's where I was born, and uh, I completed uh, last year uh, in the Nationals uh, in Annapolis on, uh, for the single-handed uh, college Nationals. Yeah, competing in the Nationals was fun. Um, yeah, although it wasn't the result I wanted, uh, I still have two years to improve. And uh, also with the team, uh, we can make uh, good uh, gains throughout the years. Uh, it's the biggest conference of the United States. And um, yeah, it's going by Upper State New York to South of Virginia. Yeah, it's a very competitive conference and we are in the, between the top teams in this conference. And after uh, through a system of qualifier and a selection by a board selection, you are admitted to the national championship. For example, last fall we've been at the last national championship with Valerio because we have two, two events in the college sailing. We have a single ended event, so not with this boat, with a smaller boat that is named the Laser and is an Olympic class. And, um, and after the double ended, that is this boat, there are two, one skipper and one crew. Okay, and uh, there are two different uh, national championship. And uh, now this fall, we, we try to, to go that we just uh, uh, sail in, in the three different national championship in the last. Okay, we excluded the last two years of COVID that, uh, okay, all our activity and there was Okay, a big trouble was suspended, but um, in the last uh, uh, four years, we'll be present in three editions of the National Championship. Do we talk about the future? Sure, why not? The future of Hampton University sports is actually happening way sooner than we expected. In 2023, Hampton University will become the only HBCU in the CAA division. And with that, many new teams are being developed right under our noses. For example, the women's lacrosse club. My name is Nina Pinto. I'm a graduating senior psych pre-med major from Philadelphia, and I have the pleasure of being the co-captain and founding team member of the Hampton University Women's Club Lacrosse Team. Cross Club was created back in 2019 in the fall. Me and a couple of other girls all found each other doing wall ball together, and naturally we all just started thinking like, hey, we should really form a team here at Hampton since it's never been done before beginning was just to form a club and then I think as we saw the amount of momentum and steam that we were able to gain it really became evident that we had the potential and the possibility to become a D1 team so now the goal of course is just keeping everything together and very tight knit but also making sure that we set up the progression for us to one day become a D1 sport here at Hampton. First career win was the week before Thanksgiving. We were playing against Christopher Newport University. We had asked to come and just scrimmage. And it was really interesting because I think the entire team went in with almost like a losing mindset since even though we had been practicing so hard due to the pandemic, we weren't even able to fully be able to play and practice together as a team for over a year. So we almost went into it thinking like, man, are we going to win? But after that first, goal man it really became not if we're going to win 
but how many goals can we get in order to get this? Girls who are gonna be coming here and playing lacrosse are really gonna be standing on the shoulders of giants who have established this team from the ground up, continue to push the progress of the team forward until we get the goal that we wanted, which is to become D1. And other than that, go out there and go play hard. So let's, let's actually take time to go to the construction site where they're actually building a new extension to the football field. This is the addition to the uh, Armstrong Stadium, the fourth addition. It's going to be identical to the opposite side. Uh, the seating area is supposed to seat approximately 5,000 fans. Um, there's going to be locker rooms, bathrooms, uh, a weight room, and um, more access to the um, stadium from this side of the building. I think it has something to do with the new um, division that they're moving into and then them expanding their um, athletic program. I have great aspirations for the new division. And here's what the Pirates have to say about the CAA. My name is Shane Porter. I'm a part of the Hampton University football team. I'm a redshirt freshman and I'm an outside linebacker, number 58. I think the importance of Hampton moving to the CAA conference is breaking the narrative that HBCU athletes don't have or can't have as bright of a future as PWI athletes. Um, I think the breaking of this narrative is something that's being seen more and more, you know, as we see uh, some of the top high school recruits continuing to commit to HBCUs, uh, such as Jackson State. And I think it's important um, that we as, you know, black athletes are competing and playing in front of the, in front of as many people as we can. You know, being able to, to play in an environment where, where, you know, we have as many eyes on us as possible, just being able to show what we can do is important for, I think, the, the excellence of all HBCU athletes, not just here in Hampton. The league means more attention. Uh, more eyes that are going to be on us, and we got a lot of players, including myself, that frankly have something to prove. You know, show to show that you know we we deserve a chance, and that uh, you know it really goes towards breaking the narrative that HBCU athletes don't have as bright of a future as PWI athletes, um, which I really think was the you know one of the motivations behind uh, moving towards this bigger league. Future advice to HBCU athletes that will come after me is to not just automatically um, not just automatically agree with the mindset that HBCU athletes don't have as much of a chance to go pro as PWI athletes. You know, if you got what it takes, people are gonna see you. Um, you know, if you're willing to just put in the work and do what your coaches tell you to do and give your 100% in everything that you do for the team and for yourself, um, then you definitely, you'll definitely have a bright future ahead of you. Lastly, I'd like to leave you with this one final thought. You may have wondered why the project is called Emergence. Well, the definition of Emergence is the process of coming into view or being important or even being prominent. And what's more prominent than Hampton University? Hampton has created an atmosphere only a few get to witness. Only a few get to say they attended or even graduated from. So take the time, reflect on this experience, and maybe one day you'll become a part of the Emergence.